What's up everybody? Guess what? Candy is not here this week, but for your newest episode of Speak On It, you got your boy Don Juan. And to my left, I got the teddy bear of Candy in the gang, the man that everybody loves, Chef Melvin in the building. And together, we are about to speak on it! What happened? What happened? I was about to say that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, like, yeah. We're going to try this again. Y'all going to have to like, yeah, y'all going to have to like brief me and coach me. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Everyone, I am your girl Candy, and I'm about to speak on it. Speak on it. <laughs> we still are here with the man that everybody has been asking to sit in this chair to my left. You know, people have been really, really. Loving seeing you on this show. I don't understand how. I don't say nothing. <laughs> no, it's black. We need to get in that kitchen and see what we can do. All right. You can't see how you supposed to do something. But the times you say you impactful. <laughs> ah, Ty, don't be a hater. Don't do that. But yeah, this is cool. I definitely think you should go on the move forward and get you a truck though, bro. Yeah. So today we're gonna talk to him about all things candy in the game. We're gonna get in his business. We're gonna learn a lot more about him. And I'm ready to jump in it. So, Melvin, I think the first part that I wanna start off with is everybody knows you, but when people talk about it, they always try to figure out, well, how they related? Well, who he related? Well, why is that Patrick brother? And they got the same mind. They try to figure out the dynamic. So break it down for the people who right. don't know who Chef Melvin is in relation to the gang. Won't you and your family come and hang with Candy and the gang? All right, so to the gang, in relation to all family aspects, I am Aunt Bertha's middle grandchild. Me and Patrick are not biological brothers. We grew up together, so we just adapted the title brothers. His mother stepped in and helped raise me when I was having, you know, family issues. Patrick's mother and your father our brother and, brother and sisters. Melvin is my grandson. He is my son, son. You got Umbertha over here, and you've met Umbertha. Yeah, everybody knows Umbertha. Four out of four, say you was a hoe. And you have her kids, which you have Melvin's father, you have Patrick's mother. What's up, Candy? My cousin Weenie, she always makes us, you know, make up and get on the same page. Ooh. And then you have Kim, who you also have met. I love OLG. Ain't no way in the world I'd have walked away from this. That gives you a little bit of dynamic of, you know, the people in the family. I'm here for you. And I've been here for you. How many years? 28? Uh, Grandma, you all about two years. I'm 30. <laughs> so, Chef Melvin, we've also been able to see you over the years. They did some flashbacks this time. Even though we're cousins, he's like my son. You know what I mean? I love him with all my heart. Yeah, I saw that. Let's give some insight into who you are and then how did you get, let's get the brief synopsis of how you got to this point with being the chef at Old Lady Gang. You know, of course, uh, anybody who actually knows me, and for those who don't know me, uh, my entire life I played football. Things actually, you play football? Man, you know, I, actually, I was in the band for a minute, too. You know? <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm, I might be all right with the flu. <laughs> but, yeah, I played football my entire life. Uh, and, uh, my senior year of college, some things kind of took a turn for the worse. Um, I ended up getting in a little trouble. I mean, uh, of course, you guys have been following uh, Housewives. I was on a few episodes. Candy actually spoke on that. Around the time she was opening the restaurant, uh, yeah, I kind of needed a job, and I had some things in life I had to figure out. I actually started off as a dishwasher. And That's what chicken. people don't realize. Yeah, people like, don't realize that. Yeah, like nothing that they're, you know, just because Candy's my aunt, you know, uh, the position of, of being a chef or me being the kitchen manager, that wasn't something that was just handed to me. Started out as a dishwasher. He worked his way up. Like I really had to learn the ins and outs of the restaurant from being dishwasher, utility worker, Dishwasher, of course, we have a lot of dishes that come through the kitchen. Like, people be like, I wash dishes at home. You ain't washed nah, restaurant dishes. Nah, you haven't washed <laughs> restaurant dishes. I really went through a lot to get to where I am with the company and, you know, actually being able to, like, take the title serious of being, like, the kitchen manager and the chef for a lady guy. Melvin went to culinary arts school. You okay, sent them to so, culinary school. Well, I didn't pay for everything. A lot of times what we're seeing on there and even when we're getting into the season, you started to see that 
People talk about, oh my gosh, the food can take forever. Because one of the things that we get complaints about uh -huh. is about the kitchen. Todd doesn't want to come in the kitchen. Oh my God, it tastes the same sometimes, but it doesn't. We've seen all this happen on the show. You can come on Wednesday, the food not yes. going to taste how it tastes on Saturday. Walk me through or tell me your take when they say stuff like that. My take on the situation when, you know, certain comments are made or... When Melvin's not doing his macaroni cheese, they do their own thing with the macaroni cheese. I can't really take your opinion serious if you can't do this job. Mm. So, me listening to a server or me listening to somebody give their opinion on anything restaurant or kitchen related, and me personally, I know you can't boil ramen noodles at home. Yeah, it, you know, that, that, that kind of gets thrown to the back for me. Um, as far as as far as the situation of people want Ty to step in the kitchen, like Ty's a restaurant owner, like he's not a he's not a cook. I it would be a good idea if you uh -huh. work in the, one day in the kitchen with the guys. He's not mm -hmm. a restaurant worker. See, if you're in there, you might could see the reason why it's taking I, I so long. Know the and even I had to realize that because it's been many times that me and him have. We've had our little fallouts. Me and him, we done bumped heads. You know, Candy let you as her son. But you're not leading in that kitchen. Over the time, and as I've actually grown and matured more, like I had learned, like, I get me and you, we'll never see everything in the same light. We need a people in here that want to cook. You're a restaurant owner, I'm a restaurant worker. So your take on things, your opinions on things, they're going to always be different from mine because you're running a business and I'm actually in it. I personally feel with Melvin, Todd is definitely too hard on him sometimes. He can handle it. If someone was to say, okay, well, the line is long, what what can give some people some insight on, like, what can make the food be delayed? So we open the restaurant every day at 12 o'clock. Mm -hmm. If the whole restaurant is set and all the servers ring and all the tickets at one time, is no possible way that you think that we can feed 200 people in 20 minutes. How y'all doing? No problem. What y'all doing? I'm Brian. Welcome, y'all. It's almost impossible. You want the food to be fresh. You don't want it just sitting under a heat lamp. You don't want anything pre-cooked or batch cooked. It's going to be nearly impossible. I understand that we're, we're quite a busy restaurant. On the weekends, we have long lines, really, from the top of Peter Street all the way to the bottom end. You know, it's kind of a... It's kind of really just an understanding. Like, like, can you expect to eat Thanksgiving dinner at your grandma's house in 20 minutes? Chef Melvin, did you come over here to give the people all of this today? I wasn't expecting it. You know what I'm saying? But no, I, I, I just, think that I think that real. it's a truth that like when you sit to other people, they're like, well, my food took longer. And, you know, I feel like a lot of things that go on at our restaurant. I feel like guests wouldn't do it. You know, I don't know if I can say name other restaurant, but I feel like people that are coming to our restaurant, the way that they act or the attitudes that they give our servers or the impatience level that they have, they wouldn't do that at Houston's. Welcome to Old Lady Gang. This is normal. Mm. Got you. I mean, I can I can respect that. I think, you know, we're always happy that the people come, but sometimes we're like, this happens in restaurants. So I think sometimes from your point of view, when people say it, you're like, there are things that you take very serious, like, okay, well, no, that shouldn't have went out with the food quality. And there's things that you're like, hold on, I don't know, you know, like, it can put you on defense. Got it. With this depiction, we're seeing a lot of Chef Melvin this season. You know, you haven't seen your housewives like this. We've seen you in real form. So I'm going to go through some of the things that you have experienced thus far on Candy and the Game. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And then let's get your insight into it. Okay. So one of the first things that they talked about, which coming in, it shows, like you said, you mentioned you and Todd not seeing eye to eye. I definitely put up with a lot more than I would if I was working for anybody else. So the conversation at hand was, I mean, we're just going to be frank about it. At the time, uh, the, pan the pandemic had just happened. We didn't have any employees. I was working a lot. I still feel as if uh, at the time, Ty was still expecting everything to flow as if I still had full staff and it's kind of impossible for one or two people to do the job of seven or eight. So if you're not going to be that, then we all wasting our time and we BS. I donated a lot of time. Donated? I, well, I'm not going to say donated because I was actually, hey, listen, one thing about it, these people pay me damn good, okay? <laughs> I was like, hold on. <laughs> they, pay, they pay me damn good, so let me not say donated. But I gave a lot of time. In a moment and in a sense, it felt as if what I was giving, it really wasn't appreciated or it didn't seem like I was doing enough. Okay. So it kind of put me at a sense of, okay, hold on, so maybe I should dial back some, which was 
a poor decision on my end because like that still affects my integrity as a person. When me and Ty had the conversation, this is this may be our subject. Like I was having the conversation, I forgot we started filming that day. But that's what I'm saying. I think that people don't realize like once the cameras start going, you forget you mic'd up, you forget all these people are around taping, I mean, you just be having your real conversation. Yeah, this, 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 is, this is a real life conversation between me and him. We need a people in here that want to cook. Um, from seeing one of the episodes, I know I made the comment, it's 168 hours in a week, which is accurate. It's 168 hours in a week. At that point in time, sleep deprived. I'm here almost 100 out of that. Like I'm going through it and anybody who works in the restaurant industry, they can relate. We don't work normal hours. There's no such thing as a normal, a normal shift or a normal week in the restaurant industry. So the conversation with me inside, uh, it pretty much, uh, I felt as if he was trying to say I wasn't doing enough. Mm -hmm. And at the time I felt like I was doing more than enough. Got you. I personally feel with Melvin, Todd is definitely too hard on him sometimes. I have to remove the emotional and the family aspect out of it because at the end of the day, it's still business. Mm -hmm. That was something that I had to learn and grow into because I still look at it as family. You take What's away from him. No, I'm not taking that away. Dude. Like, yeah, I get you. Like It's still family, but in certain aspects, like you have to remove that. You have to. You have to stick to the business. Being as that, I do work for Candy, my godmother. So I think it's it's trying to figure out the balance in all of it because you know people even say business isn't personal, but like somebody once told me, people don't leave companies; they leave people. I can. And you I get can. what I'm saying? Like Definitely. you you have been at places where you like, yeah, I like all this, but in any business, it still has a, a under. Like I think it's just the balance or with figuring out specifically because it is you know your family and involved. So I think it does add a different layer. But at the same time, you know, it's kind of hard for you to tell a person not to take something personal that they love and that they're truly Absolutely. involved in. Like I said. I'm seeing this building more than I'm seeing my own bed. Grandma, you know my life. I don't do nothing but work. That restaurant really consumes a, yeah. a lot of me. I'm here for you. Anytime that I actually get to like spend with my grandparents, it brings me back to earth for real. This this is my life, so it's kind of hard to yeah. not take the criticism in the wrong way or to yeah. not take no, it I get it. And the pandemic, like I said, hurt a lot of businesses. And you know, and you we, went from hundreds of people to like you're like pulling people in. So I think that's something we've talked about before, where people be like, "Well, what about such such?" You like people were in here like, oh, "No, I'm sticking it through." Whereas other people come like, and they they weren't. And so that's why it's kind of a different loyalty. So let's go on to the aspect of we see. Shandrika is on this mission and you know she she feels like you a snitch you know what I'm saying and so she come holla at you and Patrick about you know y'all snitching and let me address something and I don't I don't know if you if, if, the, if the viewers or the people know but like I went to prison before I had a, a cooking career or any of that like I was in prison so if I ain't tell on nobody to get less time or if I ain't tell on nobody you know what I'm saying so I can come home and I have to deal with the certain consequences of putting on a jumpsuit and all that, the hell I'm gonna tell on somebody for free for? That don't even make sense. You definitely explained to her when she walked up like, this sound like a messy ass conversation and what you talking about. That look like Shandrika, what's up girl? This where y'all hiding at? And like I said, I've been to prison, so you know like the term snitch or telling or being a rat, like, yeah, like that really bothers me. I've seen some real, some real bad things happen to people for having that title placed on them. So I eat this conversation is really some bullshit. And yeah, that's something I ain't I never be able to play with nobody about. I ain't never been a rat. That ain't my family code. Yeah, and I mean, and I think the viewers, you know, cause I'm not gonna lie, we was all watching, they was like, oh, Melvin is talking today. So who said that me or Patrick said that? Or is this just an assumption that you coming up with? You know what I'm saying? You sitting over there drinking your smoothie, drinking your, and you like, so what you talking about? Well, guess what? We didn't say nothing about you. Nobody put you in this I Okay, that's fine. If, this, if that was it, then that was it. All right, cool, okay, so we can end the conversation. That was it. Conversation right, cool. done. That's it. Business. Conversation done. I am. Let's get your mess ass on. That's it. You know what I'm saying? On birth the side of you came out. You said, what you talking about? Basically, it's some bullshit. So I eat this conversation is really some bullshit. Yeah, man, because it was. Like, I ain't no, nah, like, you know, I don't. So how did you feel watching it when you saw what really transpired? She talked too damn much. <laughs> Hold on herself. It was one of those moments like, mm, when you see it back and you really see what happened, um, it was definitely like, oh, okay. Shut up. 
let's talk about you know how um you got dragged um you know at this uh team building where we we kick that ass you know what i'm saying where we're team no 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 we're team todd kicked that ass and pulled your ass out you know what i'm saying so I don't know if y'all gonna uh, y'all gonna give me a cut scene and y'all gonna play back the scene. Ready, three, two, one. Come on, we got it. But if they actually show what really happened in the first one, I drugged the entire team by myself. I couldn't run back anymore. There was a tarp behind me. I was running through the tarp. They're not gonna show that part on camera though. Now, Candy, where did you guys go wrong? You know, you had Melvin, who's uh, 300 pounds, ex-football player. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I but, mean, it sound good. But I know, hey, if we can get in contact with Bravo, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all release that little bit of footage for me, all right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cause we saw Candy get drugged. They were dragging me. We saw Melvin get drugged. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Unfortunately, Melvin cannot pull the whole team by itself. Let's go back. Let's <laughs> cut to the scene. <laughs> My entire team was on the ground and I was still pulling by myself. <laughs> All right. Okay, it's just, you, you know, know, I'm used to actually carrying the team, you know. Oh, okay. You know, I felt. That's I how you feel? Yeah, most definitely. Okay. I do. So Melvin, you know, he, we had the team building and you know, Melvin team, you know, how did you feel about the whole team building experience once uh, like it was all finished? After the team building experience was uh, all said and done, I actually had a greater sense of like camaraderie with our employees and you know, with everybody that was yeah. on the show because anybody that knows me, like everybody knows I don't like to talk to people. Like, mm -hmm. I don't talk to people, I don't interact with people. Even this interview is like a bit much for me. Yeah, I think you, you're you doing really great. You know what I'm saying? First of all, you came in here and I said, he didn't put the shades on. He didn't got this fresh. I said, he ain't got no black on and he ain't in the kitchen. He over here shining and stuff. Since we gonna segue to this, Melvin, cause the, the ladies are definitely gonna wanna know, are you single? I got something going on right now. Okay, he got something going on right now is what he's saying. He came to give y'all what y'all been asking for because people in the comments and on Twitter. Where Melvin at? Oh, Melvin, they be going in. So I said, oh, he knew he was coming to speak on it. So Melvin ain't coming here looking dusty or nothing. Know. He, he, knows, he knows it's different from me. You know, I am a totally different person outside of working, outside of the chef coat. A lot of people really don't get the you know, see or view that because I'm always at work. When I do get a chance to step out or, you know what I'm saying, get to be a little active, you know, I clean up pretty you much, You know, he cleaned up, I right. said. With this newfound, you know, I, I, I'm gonna say fame, but notoriety and people knowing you. I, I go with notoriety before I go with fame. Let's go with notoriety. How has it been with you being out in public, being in the restaurant, people noticing you? Man, if, yo, I got a stalker in my apartments. I got a whole stalker in my apartments, like. Maybe, let's say in a mire. Yeah. I don't never see her. She always see me, catch me on camera, post it on Instagram, like. And at you. Yeah, and at me. Yeah, I, like, you sent them to me and you were like, yo, what do I like? Yeah, he I'm literally like... was one day he was cooking at the pool and they got him. The next day he was going in the entrance and they were across man, the street. I'm checking my mailbox, man. Maybe let's say an admire. Outside of the admire, how have you felt with or how have people received you? Everybody else has received me pretty cool. You know, people walk up on me, ask me for pictures. Is the walk up, does the walk up still throw you off sometimes? Cause nah, see, it don't throw me off no more. The thing that used to get me, I'm not gonna lie, is I loved like anywhere I go, you know, I'm be like, whatever, take a picture, let's do it. Let's ha ha ha. The thing that used to get me is when they would come up and they wouldn't kind of respect your space. And they'd be like, yo, and you'd be like, Nah, Whoa, did you just grab me? Hold on, that threw me off. You know so what I'm saying? I had a situation happen like that maybe a couple weeks ago. So me and my lady friend, we out on a date. I want to say, we sitting at the bar, we drinking, we talking. I got ambushed by like, I want to say like 10 females. Like, 10? Yeah. You had a whole... It was like a whole... Like, what? Was, yeah, like it, it threw me off for real. Like at that moment, I was like, oh, okay, cool. So like people really are like, notice, okay, wow. It threw my date off. She... She looking kind of embarrassed. She trying to cover her face up. So, you know, of course, I go talk, take the pictures. I tell That's them, what we do. Yeah, I tell them, you know, make sure y'all come to the old lady game while y'all in town because they were from out of town. Okay. 
Y'all make sure y'all come through Old Lady Gang, by the way, too. If Absolutely. Like Sorry. Kendo say, so you can be out there on Peter Street if we open, if we ain't open yet. But once we yeah, open, we then you're you going to come in. We're going to get you in. 10 is a lot of people to run up at one time. Oh, you know, after everything, I'm talking to my dad. She's like, man, I can't go nowhere in public with you. I got to always have my makeup, did. Got to always look like some. I'm like, Shit got deep. Yeah, <laughs> you got it because you, you know, you used to be like, let me go out. It's amazing the feeling because the love you get, don't get me wrong, I feel yeah. the same way. It'd be amazing the love you get and how you feel about it, but I think it only throws you off when like it's your space. They do something that you're not expecting. Like, I've only been thrown off when people, like, I've literally walked somebody grab my, and I've been like, whoa, you just grabbed me. Like, I don't, I don't think you're supposed to grab anybody. Like, you know, you could speak, we could have a conversation, but you just grab me. You know, majority of the time when I run into, uh, when I run into situations like that, I'm at the restaurant, so. Got you. It's cool, but like, this was like my first time like being out where it was like. Hey, this is what we doing. Okay. Right. You're housewarming. <laughs> I mean, you know, a lot happened with this housewarming. But now, Come on, let's speak on it. It. Let's speak on this housewarming. You know, in your confessional, you talk about how that wasn't your interpretation of something fun. Um, no, this wouldn't be my rendition of a housewarming party. So let's just be clear. A party or anything that was considered fun. I'm always at work. So I told my brother, you know, how I told Patrick, however he decided that he wanted to do the housewarming. That's cool, that's on him. Um, no. I even had the conversation with Candy. If it was up to me, I wouldn't have had one. Mm. Okay. I right, once again, I don't like people. Like you, listen. I, I don't like people. So like people knowing where I live at, and you know people who, like I said like it's a difference in between you know coworkers and friends and you know the whole friendization thing. Like a lot of these people are like are like coworkers. Like I don't really have like genuine friendships with them. Like I have genuine friendships with maybe. Couple people like who? The restaurant. Um, I have a, me and Brandon are like really close. I'm really close with Dom. I love Melvin. I feel like Melvin is a real hard worker. Okay. I feel like I I really commend him on how much he put into the restaurant. Like mm -hmm. literally, that's everything to Melvin, and it's commendable. I feel bad for him sometimes because I feel like he doesn't get to live his life. Mm -hmm. Um, really close with Narina. That's it. Okay, so you're not really close with Shandrika. You're not really close with anybody. Okay, Torin, anybody else? So this whole housewarming did you feel like you should have had more of a say instead of safari and everybody else having a say the way things turned out yeah this is a chill vibe relax relate release I found <laughs> would you have allowed chandrika in if you would have had your say no okay I feel like the situation with Patrick, Shandrika, and June, it was it was no re it was no reason for them to even want to come for it. Like, why? Guest list is final. Everybody's invited. Do you feel that Dom was in the wrong for not going out, even though they may have been communicating, Dom has said, without, without going out with her friend? No. Okay. So you don't feel Dom was in the wrong? With the whole, like, housewarming, Y'all, we had some food and stuff there. Did you did you have some of the egg rolls? Cause you know every time we get on he get on camera, Brian has got some egg rolls. Have you had any of the the rolls? Man, the soul rolls are great. I think he's gonna go far. It's different. It's unique. Be as creative as you want to be with. It, so I think I really appreciate. It. I didn't think he was gonna come, but thank you. I didn't think I was gonna be able to escape the restaurant on the side of that. <laughs> I support the full movement of Brian and these soul rolls. Cause you so you've had them and they were good. And yeah, most definitely. Uh, I mean, I've had them too. I just wanted to know from the chef's perspective. Oh, yeah, most definitely. He do his thing. Got you just a few of them. Your favorite is on here. So that's just collard greens and mac and cheese. Well, yeah, I like that. And so Wani Salmon is there, the old national chicken one. And these are my cheesecake ones. Some of the things that's happened, let's see about having you just quick fire answers on some of the things that may have happened on the show thus far. The budding relationship with your close friend, Brandon and Dom. Were you aware of this relationship? Yeah. I feel like I was the only one, and me and Candy didn't were in the dark. Yeah, I think y'all were the only people that was out the loop for real. <laughs> yeah. With the dynamic that you are seeing with Richardo and Dom, were you aware of any friction with that? What you gonna say? I, 
I, that's really where I am with it. It's like, what are you going to say? No, I had no idea. Okay, great. So I'm so happy this topic came up. I had, I had no idea that they was beefing. Oh, baby. You want a mother problem? You got exactly what you asked for. I'm gonna give you the problem that you have been begging me for so bad. Did you have any idea previously about tug and pull before we saw it on camera? Man. Oh, <laughs> none of us. Not, not at all. <laughs> that may be true. This is torn. I was all the way out. <laughs> we was all out of the loop on that. With touring coming back into the, the fold and the events and all of that, what are your thoughts? Because we still have one episode left. Uh, one episode left. I wanted to know if you could help me to propose to Safari. What are your thoughts going into this finale and Friday Night Vibe? I feel like Torrin's a great event planner. Whatever you give him to work with, he gonna make the best out of it. Michelle. Maybe when my services are for the free free, you get Kelly, Michelle, and a little throw rug and a pillow. You can't even afford Beyonce. She's still at the house. I'm actually excited for, you know, the Friday Night Live or Friday Night Vibe of what we're calling it now. Mm -hmm. That she come back. If I do not do a good job, all that I've worked hard for would be completely erased. It has to work. I mean, me personally, the only thing I really care about is the kitchen and the restaurant, so I feel like it's gonna help us out. <laughs> so I'm all for it. My uh, proposal is to rebrand. I want to change it to like Friday night vibe. It have different theme nights. Maybe the music could be different one night. Final thoughts. When you see the old lady gang and how they are, I guess everybody is loving them and their confessionals. Todd and I said, we just going to make sure everybody gets the $100. Since it was two and two. I wonder if we going to get $100. I doubt it. Did you expect any, or is, do you feel like they're getting the authentic old lady gang when they see these three old women and the way they're talking about everything that's going on in their commentary? I can't stand him. But you know, it's yes, to me. Yes, put on that Aunt Bertha say, but she cannot stand him. I feel like my grandma was the realest one. <laughs> I'm team Bertha. Why do you feel like she the realest one? That lady can do no wrong in my eyes. It's my grandma, uh, you know, that's... <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm team Bertha. We cannot have the grandsons and somebody else be a Jew. That's not fair. That Bertha had burned up her cake, but they picked her cake. So those her yeah. grandsons, they had to. Whatever. That's, that's who I'm right with. I feel like everything is authentic between them, but I'm team Bertha. No matter what the situation, no matter what the circumstances is, however it plays out. Yeah, what was your take when you saw the speak on it and the weekend to talk about the family dynamic and things happening? Yo, Aunt Bertha was not here for it. What is your, I guess, take on the family dynamic and the things that transpired? Okay, I'm through with it. I'm gone. Oh, I didn't even want it to be that. Well, I am. My grandma's spoiled as hell. Just just wait a minute. Like, that's just what it is. So if it's something she don't like, she gonna let you know. She gonna give you her little attitude and temperament about it. Why are you cussing so? I mean, it's gonna be all right. You know, she'll come back down, but you gonna get her attitude before she come back down, though. Oh, y'all. It's not that deep, y'all, seriously. Yeah, that shit don't even make sense. Keep going. bringing it, bringing it up. Right. And so you felt like that's what we were seeing in the first speak on it, where yeah. she, she was not for. Do you feel like the family dynamic has gotten better? Next question. Okay. I just want everybody to be happy mm -hmm. and to love each other. With that, I'm going to keep Chef Melvin here, but I would like to bring in, since he already didn't, you know, told that he's B, BFFs, you know, even though guys don't have BFFs, he's a, <laughs> he is, you know what I'm saying, his, his buddy friendship and bromance with, with Brandon over here, you know what I'm saying? Bromance. Oh, oh. Scratch that. <laughs> so we're gonna bring in Brandon Black after the break and we're gonna continue talking to them on this episode of Speak On It for episode nine, season one of Candy and the Gang. And we're gonna be right back. Gang, gang. We've got merch. Yes, old lady gang, gang, gang. You can get the merch now right here online or you can get it at the restaurant. We have different colors that they have at the restaurant and some colors that they don't have at the restaurant are right here online. We are back again. I'm Don Juan. I'm sitting in for Candy on this week. Speak on it. To my left, of course, I still got Chef Melvin. And to my right, I got our special guest that we just added, Mr. Brandon Black. And all of us together are about to speak on it. 
That, that, okay, that, Melvin, you didn't even say nothing. Yeah, See, you have I'm to trying. Around. I'm trying this time, you know, but nobody's listening to me. It was a speak on it, speak on it, speak on it. Oh, okay. Man. Well, speak on it. You're not trying to make me sing. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to make you sing. You know what I'm saying? You got the shades on. You looking, you know, real uh, Gerald Lavertish. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> got you. <laughs> Real Ruben Stutter, Jaron Lavertis, Teddy Bears, you know. You know so I take more of a Tevin Campbell, you know. Oh, oh, okay, you light skin now. Okay. You know so Brandon, you are joining us for Speak On It. Welcome, yes. welcome, welcome. Thank you. You have made the Speak On It chairs. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people grace these chairs. You know, I so, I so now, now you understand with being under lights and Speak On It. What we want to do is today talk to you about your journey with Candy and the Gang. But like I uh, talked to with Chef Melvin, give some insight into getting here so people that may not even understand because i think a lot of people also don't understand what people do who they are in the restaurant because sometimes i think it kind of gets a little gray i got to old lady gang i was literally just trying to find a job um the lifestyle i was living previous to that what i had that? got um i was promoting parties um selling drugs i was doing um a lot of things to make it happen you know i didn't um i didn't finish school i went to school um i went to famu for about a semester. Came back. Okay. To, this is interesting. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I, I got to pause this, this already. No, this is go. You went to FAMU when? Uh, what, 07? I got okay. To 07. So was Dom unique at FAMU when you went? No. Like I said, I went for like literally a semester. Okay. Came back, the amount of state fees was crazy. So Dom went to FAMU and you went to FAMU. It was just at different times. Mm -hmm. Okay, continue on. Let's get. I just want to make sure I clarified that because it just threw me off. <laughs> um, I was thought you was stalking her all the way to FAMU. Oh, I was about to be like, <laughs> I was never stalking the girl. What the, I'm okay. to this bitch. <laughs> so keep going. For a real player, man. We ain't doing no stalking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, but so I came back. I went to uh, Georgia State, um, and at Georgia State, okay, by the way, I was always, I've always been doing like house party stuff, even back in high school. Okay, so you used to do a lot just, of house parties and promoting yeah, and those like, kind of things, know, got you. Um, Very nightlife. Like, yeah, I got to Georgia State, you know, I got back in two parties, I was home, you know, um, and I started making some money, and I, I didn't finish, you know, I went to the state, um, I even tried to like switch my, my, my majors up to mm -hmm. get out quicker and all okay. that type of stuff. But I just was like, yeah, nah. What was your, what were you going to school for? So I started out in um, finance, and when I tried to hurry up and just get my paper, <laughs> I switched over to uh, political science. So you're here in Atlanta. Are you from Atlanta? I'm not from Atlanta. I am from New York. Well, I'm from Atlanta now. I was born in New York. We'll put it that way. Okay. You I were born in New York, York and so you I was about twelve. Okay. And so you've been in Atlanta for last twenty years or so, mm -hmm. except when you left to go to college. Yeah. So you were here. You got this journey. You've had a checker, you know, past. Have done some things to be able to support yourself and be able to go on. How did you get to? Old lady gang on Peter Street, standing outside on Peter Street, like Kendall says. Yeah, how did you get to Peter Street? So like I was saying, I was plateauing in what I was doing before. I was tired of the club scene, tired of the nightlife. I was actually trying to transition into managing nightclub, and that ended abruptly on. So the people are definitely gonna ask, did any of them end abruptly because you weren't doing your part? Nah, so Brooklyn Kitchen was, um, so the nightlife game is so, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of industries can be political. Mm -hmm. So I traveled in a lot of circles with um, different owners because, like I said, I was actually um, selling drugs and doing other things. So I was back out and I was just didn't want to go back to promoting. So I said, hey, I'm going to, you know, take a stab at the restaurant industry. And I've worked in restaurants before. Mm -hmm. um, what did you do in restaurants before? I was a manager. OK, got yeah, you. I was a manager. Yeah, so I just came down. I think I uh, was managing at the time. OK. And I hit him up and I said, hey, you know, I'm interested in managing. He sent me up an interview with you. Mm -hmm. and. Here we are. Got you. So we get to this point and we, we come to, you're at Old Lady Gang, you are managing, and they start to film this show. Mm -hmm. For both of you, they start to film this show at a restaurant. Did either one of you have reservations about doing a reality show? Go first. Hell yeah. You have reservations, Hell did you? Yeah. Never. Never. Tell me why you have reservations. So, okay, when you say reservations, like, kind of like if you're about yeah. to Yeah. Okay, wow. yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Because, um, I don't know. Reality, when I hear reality show, I'm always thinking about drama and fights and just unnecessary. And I'm not a drama-filled person at all. I stay out the way, mm -hmm. um, you know, unless it's brought to me. Then, mm -hmm. of course, we, you know, we can handle it. But, yeah, I just... And then the way it was portrayed on certain um, TV shows, like I remember when Love and Hip Hop and shows like that first started coming out. And I just felt like people were really degrading themselves, mm -hmm. you know. But seeing this and seeing how we were filming 
and the scenes that we got, I was like, oh, okay, you know, it's not so much just a, a, a ghetto free fall, do whatever. Well, what do you, you say know? to the people that do feel like we ghetto? I mean, have they seen the other shows? <laughs> I would ask that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would act because I mean. So how do you? How do you? And we gonna go to you first, Melvin. How do you feel the portrayal of us at, as a urban or a black restaurant and us on TV as thirty somethings like who are living our lives? How do you feel that portrayal has been? I feel like it's real. Mm -hmm. I feel like it actually captures you know what really goes on and what we actually have going on. And like it may not be you know the best or you know people may say oh it's not action-packed or you know ain't nobody getting beat up again they wig or, or drink through on them but it's real oh it's tearing here yeah let me go check she all right yeah man she just she didn't eat right yeah and then she started taking shots i was like so the nah, man. i think the same thing too i think it's um very accurate actually the only thing that i got a problem with everybody be trying to make it seem like i don't be working okay and we both know i got down one here now he can tell you. Okay, it's fine. Like, watch this though. Watch this. Too. Talk, talk to the people that because that is the question. People' uh, response to me is, "Why do you still have him here? Mm -hmm. He does not work. They've seen a few episodes. We can go through some of your highlighted moments. One of two. Let's go through two. They would say, "Hey." They saw you sitting there eating chicken. They saw the sink stopped up and Brian had to come behind the bar and makes the drinks. And they saw the floor when the pipe had burst, like, you know, clogged up. Why didn't you step in? So that's their that's their interpretation. And this is your your time to speak on it. Got you. Let's just put it all into context. Okay. Oh man. <clears throat> As we know, we were coming out of a pandemic. Yes. Yeah. I touched on this. So Okay, first of all, when I first got the old lady gang and I walked in and I met everybody, my first thought was to fire everybody and let's start over. That was my first thought. Welcome to old lady gang. This is normal. But because so of- So were Shandrika, were yeah. Brian, were everybody working there? Everybody was Dominic was, working there? Yeah. Okay. Got yeah, you. Because I had already felt the entitlement. I already felt, I've been here since day one. I felt that on the first day I got there. But seeing as how, you know, I came at that critical time and then pandemic jumped off, it was like anybody who's in the restaurant industry knows how hard it was to keep employees. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I just saw an interview with Candy. She was touching on that as far as why she, you know, people feel like she's so lenient mm -hmm. with her staff. And it's like we were going through a time where and that's just what we were dealing with. It's not nobody's fault. It's just, you know, and that's the thing about me and Melvin is like you need people that understand the team concepts. Melvin comes from a sports background. I come from a sports background. What sports did you play? I play basketball okay. and I ran cross country. Okay. <clears throat> so you got you got a little you know persistence and like do you go cross country? All right. That's yeah, some miles you gotta, on you. You gotta stay. That's in some there. miles. The you furthest know. you gonna get from me is sixteen hundred. You only gonna <laughs> get one good mile from me. Four laps. <laughs> Four laps. That's all you get. But yeah, to that you know that's why we kind of um, can bond so well because we understand like when the tough times come you know. Only tough people gonna last. When I get into something and people are depending on me, you know, we become family. We be, I, I gotta show up. Mm -hmm. It's not one day you can say that I. Call I can out always say that. And, you know, I can. I, I can always say you're gonna show up. I think the question that they will have are what is going. What is he doing when he shows okay, up? Okay, so let's just clear it up. So he gonna work. You know, no, and that's what I'm. I'm giving you the chance to, so we can have that conversation. And I, and I can contest to that because uh, so, once upon a time it was me, him, and two other employees. And, you know, we had to figure it out. So I can attest he gonna work. So anybody who don't think bro work or he don't be doing his job, like, nah, like. But the nah, thing is, I think I make it look easy, but to be real, I, I manage a lot of different departments. So if you do see me on my phone, I might be doing the paper goods order. I might be on the phone with the plumber to fix the sink, which I was <laughs> in that scene. Um, I manage ordering liquor. I have to be on the phone with reps at different times. They send me deals. They send me, what else do I do? I do scheduling for the whole staff, not just the front of the house. I staff the kitchen. I mean, I schedule the kitchen. I schedule, you know. So it's a lot of things that I manage just myself. And, you know, we've been lacking in the area of managers. So a lot of things like Don Juan and Philip, they've been working to get more people to help. Because really, Don Juan and Philip are not even supposed to be in the restaurant. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. we're just a company, and I realize that we're a young company when it comes to the restaurant group, and we're trying to grow. And when you can find people that understand that, then you know we gotta 
make sure those people are good. So I think we're getting to that place now. But I'll be working, y'all. I'll be working. Like, I'll be on my off days, they be calling me. And that's all of us, you know, we all work. And, I'm, you know, we try to get our off days, but we understand that. Who's going to feel it for me? You know what I mean? Watching it back, you know, like you have addressed the part where people don't feel like you work. We're going to talk about some of the instances or things that people have seen. And like I said, you guys don't see the episodes pre prior, correct? Mm -hmm. You see it when it airs on Sunday with everybody with else. Everybody. So you're not privy to what you're seeing. You just know you filmed for these months of your life and now you're watching it back. So let's talk about specifically one of the bigger instances where they talk about the situation with Brandon where, I mean, I'm sorry, with Brian, where it's him and Shardo. Mm. Okay, well give me one. But look at it. <laughs> 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 Are you ready to eat? Been then going into him and Philip. Just with Brian in response to me? Yes. Just... When you watch it back, do you feel like he was being disrespectful or he was being just Brian at that moment, which is not that he was just being playful? I'm a manager, so it's different for me sitting at the bar. I can sit anywhere in the restaurant I want because I'm not technically supposed to be performing any task. I'm overseeing. So yeah, I can sit at the bar. So I had never seen that Brian in that light, first of all. Okay. I had never seen Brian get go to eyes with anybody. Brian is usually the chipper, just happy all the time, mm -hmm. big personality, big spirit. You know, we know how Philip can get in regards to that situation. Okay. So, you know, it's well, how time. How can he get? Philip, Philip is very abrasive. He's very um, direct. Not, not a really a sense of empathy for how somebody might feel in a certain situation or how you might say it. And sometimes it calls for that. Okay. So I'm actually growing into that now. So do you, but do you feel that in that instance, how it was portrayed to him kind of put him in the predicament where he had to be abrasive? Do you feel how, do, because I think how it came is he was coming to help in theory you. Mm -hmm. So when you watch it back, do you feel the same way? I think it was, I think he went over the top. I think his Philip's reaction was a little bit extreme, but I think Brian was very disrespectful in that moment. Okay, do you feel like with watching you and Brian interact, that he was disrespectful to you, which got to the first, the second part? For sure. Okay. For sure. The way he responded when I told him to get it from the yeah. bar. Yeah, it was like, come on now. You know you're not supposed to be sitting at the bar. This is not a foreign thing, so why would you even give me any pushback at all? It'd be like, oh, you know what, Brandon? Let me just... You know you can't sit at the bar while you're working. I'm not sitting. You are sitting. You're sitting right now. <laughs> but for all of, the, the, and all of that, and then, you know. I mean, I gotta get up. Yes, please. I would like yeah. you to get up. We ain't drinking that. It don't matter. Huh? It's, a, it's improper. It's unprofessional. Right, man. Can you put my feet out? It's very disrespectful, but like I said, I wasn't the confrontational one at first. Mm -hmm. Not no more, though. Y'all gonna see. <laughs> so with that, oh, ass out. With that. I'm sorry, y'all can cut that out. <laughs> but so, ah. <laughs> so, what do you say to the people that may say, "Well, he just saw you sit at the bar the next day, and you and you have the I can manage, lead to do as I I say, not as I do" mentality? What do you say to those people? That was just in that instant, but I still feel the same way about that. I'm managing, I'm overseeing. I'm not saying I'm just sitting up at the bar every day, mm -hmm. drinking, partying, having a good time. Hi, how are you? I ain't finna shake your hand. Just stop playing with me. What's up? How you doing? I'm good. You look good. Thank you. Yeah, why you sitting all over there? Because we at work. But I might hit sit here to eat my lunch for the day. That might happen, you know? Or I might sit at one of the high top tables. He literally was sitting at the bar while I was making drinks right in front of him. It's not your job to tell me where I can sit in the restaurant. You know what I mean? I'm managing. like and I was having my lunch. That's exactly what I was doing. Do you feel that it's different and it's the do as I say, do as I, not as I? And it's not even that. It's not that. I'm just, I'm talking about what the, the fans are asking. Got you. I agree with Philip. I'm not going back and forth with an hourly paid employee. <laughs> I'm not a server. I only serve the Lord. Okay. So, we, we talk about that instance and we see things, you know, go laugh. Let's talk about, I guess, another instance of, you know, things that have happened for you this season on the show. Mm -hmm. When you're watching back this and we talk about this ring footage, the, let's go with the first ring footage, correct? We see the ring footage and we're having this conversation, you're having this conversation with Shandrika and I'm in the room. Mm -hmm. Well, some people feel like Shandrika should be mad at you. Did you at any point feel like you should have took Shandrika off of speakerphone? Uh, yeah, it crossed my mind, but what people don't know is it was already too late. Like, Don Juan came in and the conversation was going on. She said other things. You know what I mean? So, um, it was like, oh, well, we already here. There's no need for me to try to cover up or run and hide now. So, that was my take on it. 
Did you feel you owed her an apology after that? I don't think so. <laughs> no, nah, we talked about it. We talked about it. It was cool. I told her exactly what I just said. Like, girl, you, you lucky they didn't play this. Like, so it was more that could have been played if I would have gone. If I would have went further, I'm not speaking on that. What you gonna say? If I would have went further back in the footage <laughs> before I walked that. in, I don't, I don't know. What are you going to say? With that, people, because I think some people are like, "Oh, you're listening to this private conversation." Most people couldn't see that I was standing. Right, I was right, right, right. right beside you in the mm -hmm. office, so you didn't take her off speakerphone. When you watched how it played out, because maybe you didn't know that she was going around questioning everybody. How did you feel when you were watching this? Like I did not know, like when she <laughs> ran up on Melvin them and all that. What? What were your thoughts? I thought that was pretty hilarious. I thought that was funny as shit. That's why I don't like you now. It's me the whole time. I just thought it was funny. I thought it, I thought it would be entertaining, as it was. It was entertaining to me, and I knew what was going on. So you didn't feel at any point you could be like, well, I said it, or they probably got it because it is. You didn't feel like you needed to tell her that? Nah. With seeing it back, some people would say, okay, because even I think Dom mentions, like, you were calling him Benton. Why, why do you feel that she felt comfortable or why she called you to Vent? Sandrika was the first person I met going to old lady gang did so, you try to talk to sean draker no i did not okay no. gotcha so we got to clear it all the air like we yeah, got to yeah, know it's cool. yeah it's, it's a cool. lot of things that happen so i just got to know and make have you tried to talk to sean draker okay because gotcha. sean was always in a relationship with drew okay don't get me wrong since she got a pretty woman you know got you saying? since she you got girl. there she's already been yeah, in the relationship already, so it, was, okay. it wasn't it wasn't that i mean i'm the manager all of them called me to vent mm -hmm. at times you know what i mean and i think you know that's just what it was now she was very freely about how she speaks but I think that comes from her sense of entitlement. She's been with the company since y'all opened. Mm -hmm. And they voice that all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think she was thinking she was going to get in trouble for that. And like I said, you know, I was coming from a more lenient uh, managerial standpoint because of what we were going through. It's like, I'm not trying to lose nobody. Mm -hmm. I don't want to serve tables. <laughs> I don't want to wipe this stuff down. Mm -hmm. I don't want to. That's not what I signed up to do. So, yeah, I just, like I said, you know, all of them call me invent. And all of them don't say pretty stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as a manager, you kind of try to, you know, feel for them a little bit, if you will. Because they going through the pandemic, too. So we fast forward to another moment where there's ring camera. You know, I think people have are, okay. seen me in the ring camera a lot this season, you know, on the show. So when we see the ring camera the next time, we are seeing the ring camera with you. And at the moment, because what I was told, you know, someone you were dating. Are you in a whole relationship right now that, <laughs> that I'm not aware of? <laughs> what are your thoughts when you see this back and we have this conversation about the ring camera? I ain't gonna lie. I thought I was going to get a... Uh, fired i thought i was gonna be removed and i was gonna go back to the streets <laughs> that's what i was really thinking it's like okay i'll go back to the street first of all for the for the footage for for Sandra, i didn't even know the cameras were picking, picking up audio i thought the cameras were there for you know insurance purposes somebody slip and fall we can go back and see what happened but so all that was a shocker but just to clear the air we were closed this wasn't during business hours it's still wrong i'm not saying i wasn't wrong i was very wrong and you know it, it was a mistake um but we were closed just if, if that's worth anything you i and philip sit down and we talk about this footage what were your thoughts as soon as you we sat down and i'm like well <laughs> ring camera so that so yeah when that happened that's when i thought it was happening da -da -da, you have a certain amount of days da -da -da -da. that's what i thought that was i was like damn this shit about to happen on tv <laughs> And that's what I was thinking. So glad it didn't go that way because, you know, my heart is definitely a good place and I want us to win. The relationship, since we're talking, we're at that place now. Uh -huh. um, I'm seeing the relationship play out. I I mean, just so people will know, and Melvin has said it like he said, you know, we were probably, I, we were oblivious. Can you vouch that? Like, we probably were a little oblivious to this uh, relationship. Yeah, y'all yeah. would have known. And so when we see it play out, people are wondering what made you feel it was OK or that it was not frowned upon to date someone that you managed. Or did you feel that way or you weren't thinking about it because you just were in the moment? No, I definitely thought about it. I'm a thinker. So it wasn't like I just didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, and, like you know, it, it was a mistake. It, it was wrong. Um, did I think that it would affect work? No. Mm, why? Walk me through that. Did you um, think it was going to affect his job? Man, I done dated several services. <laughs> but do you manage them? Yeah, it's different, huh? Okay, but go ahead. I'm you done dated several. Man, see, see, we ain't going to speak on that. No. <laughs> <laughs> see? See? So you and Patrick was just hey, going man, through it. Hey, we ain't going to hey. run it through them. Not running through them? Uh, what? But, so, yeah, when you, you thought it was wrong, 
Yeah, yeah, definitely knew it was wrong. Like when it comes to stuff like that, I'm a stickler. It should tell you. Like we bump heads on that more than anything. Cause even when before we decided to do it, I was telling her like, yo, you know you got to be perfect now. You know you like you can't fuck up at all. You know it'd be some days I just don't even talk to her at work. And she'd be mad about that. I'm like, yo, Why? we have to because it's just. It's one of them things, it's a slippery slope. And the fact that people know now, everybody's just like, I could be walking by, Don, can you pass me that bottle? Oh my God, he just love her so much. He, see how much he be talking to her? It be that petty, you know what I mean? So sometimes she be at the upstairs bar, I don't even go upstairs, I just be downstairs. Unless I'm going to the kitchen to make sure the kids are straight or I'm just out the way. And we've had arguments about that, but not in the restaurant, you know what I mean? This is outside. So that's why I didn't feel like, because I'm a stickler when it comes to professionalism and work, and it might not seem that I way. I was going to say, what it do you say to the people that, that way? Way. But, you know, those moments where you caught me and I was, you know, everybody makes mistakes, and I'm not perfect. Yeah, you, you're seeing this, and you knew it was wrong, but you continue on with this relationship. You know, people kind of wanted to know what was your thoughts, or why, what were you thinking when you said, oh, she could go? What you going to say? No way to keep. <laughs> All right, so let's start with the first part. I kind of lost train of thought. Oh, child. <laughs> what was the first part? He had me fucked up. <laughs> I don't know if anybody knows, but we weren't dating. Um, it was literally just a flirtatious thing. We sealed the deal on the show. Okay. Um, Whoever was watching. I didn't know what I was planning to do, really. It was a good time. We didn't even, like, have no interactions. We haven't even met outside of work. For a long time because you told us you would you know just that and then we literally see he got a whole girlfriend right 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 so you know it when i say i'm dating it's because i'm not in an exclusive relationship so i mean how do you explain that it's like you know uh, okay I'm dating. what about the second part when you oh, you like know how she can go you told her she can go but you told us she could go so with that right he had me fucked up <laughs> in my mind i'm thinking what i mean to peter street Mm -hmm. And for me to leave Peter Street, it would definitely set us back, in my opinion, mm -hmm. um, just because of how much things I'm, I'm holding. He just had me fucked up. It's like, I've been here longer than you. <laughs> and it takes time to learn those positions. It's not like somebody could just be like, oh, okay. You got to really know the ebbs and flows of, you know, the time of the year, of when to order more, when to order less. and <laughs> I mean, all that type of stuff. So that was more so my thought about it. And then as far as her, you know, going, it's like, I just feel like a bartender can go anywhere and bartend and, you know, do what you do. He just had me fucked up. It's like, I've been here longer than you. Um, uh, how did she feel when she saw that back? Did you guys have a conversation yeah, about that? Yeah, we did have a conversation about that. How was that? For sure. Um, she was like, you tried me. You tried. <laughs> Y'all got me. <laughs> all that. I got all that, but it's cool. We handled it. I took it. I ate it, but it's real. It's real. I still stand on that. Like, my value to the company at that point in time, I mean, so you're you're saying your value you felt what was higher or greater, <laughs> and that's not in a bad way. It's just the reality of it, you know. We continue on. Let's talk about some of the other things that may not have been. We can talk about Chef Mel's housewarming, and you guys being at this housewarming, and lit. you were a little. I was lit. Mm. I'm thinking I'm going to a party. Um, no. You know, when I'm going to a party. I'm going to a party. I didn't think it was going to be like, you know. This wouldn't be my rendition of a housewarming party. It was more like a like a family thing. This is a chill vibe. More so than anything. It's more like a job social. <sighs> Relax, relate, release. He about to take you away. Yeah, yeah. but because we, we, all, we do operate like a family, though. It feels like a family. Like I feel like I, I'm going to disagree because I think we have went bowling and stuff and had way more fun. Was. Right, right, yeah. exactly. So that ain't no business. We all, business the thing. managers all went bowling <laughs> and stuff. We had we lit. So now we actually need to get Phil to do another one. Of <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Asap, Asap. We need Phil. That. We had just left the restaurant. We had pregame at the restaurant. You see all of us there, and you see some of what we're seeing in our <laughs> eyes. What are your thoughts, man? It's so funny because when I watched it on the episode, I'm like, yo, I don't even remember none of this. I mean, I remember it, but very vaguely. And I was very so much like just on Dom at that point in time. It was like, oh, okay, everybody's here, whatever, whatever. And I'm, you know, I'm with Dom. That's kind of how I was going through the night. And looking back, it's like, wow. <laughs> it's like the lights weren't even there. We were there. Like, and y'all were like, right yeah. here. <laughs> Glad y'all kept me though. I'm good. I'm good. Let's talk good. about even when she meets your parents. That was wild. So I really didn't think she was coming. I didn't think she was coming. We had had a whole discussion about, you know, her coming and 
why it would be awkward and she still popped up. Sometimes you gotta do some cute shit. And showed up and showed out with gifts. I was like, all right. Do you feel like that was one of the key moments where you was like, I might be about to be locked in? Yeah, this series. This series is like, you know, and I appreciated it, you know, because for the longest, which I don't know as well, she was giving me the run around. Like, so she was playing you to the yeah, left? What? Not calling me back. She done stood me up. What do you mean she stood you no. up? You know, I done went out to eat. Did you know this? <laughs> went out to eat, called her like, oh yeah, we finna go here, da da da, meet me here at this time, da da da. I pull up, call her, she pick up the phone on FaceTime. She in, she in the shower, in the, in the, in the, in the mirror. Oh, I don't think I'm a, I'm like, you know, you supposed to be here. She's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm 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 throw on some clothes. I'm like, throw on some clothes? Like, I gotta be somewhere that we supposed to be here at this time. And she started getting mad at me. So what you wanna do? What you, I'm like, how you getting mad at me? Yeah. And you still me? <laughs> so she definitely yeah. was kind of heisman you for Man, a little bit. she put me through the ringer. <laughs> she met your family, you know, all of that. You were like, okay, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm smitten at this point. It a was a bit. shocker. It, was, it showed me that she was serious too. We've had a debate about this earlier. I um, mean, you know, you may not agree either, but we can talk about this uh, team building where, um, you know, Chef Melvin and, um, you know, his team and your team, you know, got drugged. So, well, we got to give the details on how that happened. See, <laughs> I mean, we can, we can put the, I know what my man says is what I'm about to say. We had a whole barrier behind us, y'all. It was a whole tarp that we got to the point where we could not move back anymore. You know, I'm in a great organization, Five Bay Sigma, and we always say this. Excuses are tools of the incompetent, <laughs> built upon mountains of nothingless. Those that practice them and their uses seldom hey, accomplish man, look, anything. I don't yo. need you spitting your friend out. <laughs> I'm just yeah, saying. So when y'all got drug okay. at that okay, team so, building, all right, cool. so, so, loss so look, is a loss. We'll uh, take yeah, it. Yo, I, I'll gladly take my loss, but I will say this: I'll go buy the rope. Yeah, <laughs> you know what we I'm saying. We can do it. You can set your you 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 can set you and Taj. I'll set y'all team, team up. Drug. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get Philip and Candy on the phone. We can go right down here to Washington High School. We can get on <laughs> their field. I yeah. need a little bit more structure nah, beyond nah, this. So nah, guess nah, what? Nah, nah. Stop. If we have a season two, let's talk about the rematch that has to happen. But I'm picking my own team. I'm not letting them pick my team for me. Team I want my same team. Stick okay, you can keep it. that. Yeah. I want my same team. You can keep that. I take the green one. It depends on the team you on. The red one don't go on my outfit. See? Keep your team. I'm, we gonna keep our team. I am the team. I know they say there's no I in team, but there is the M and the E. Me. You know what I'm saying? I know gambling is legal in the state of Georgia. We put some money on it. Let's go. Okay. Let's go, man. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Let's talk about something like closing out the housewoman. Did you feel that Dom should have went outside to get her friends? <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. Depends on how she felt. Cause I mean, it was. It was a two-way thing, man. Um, it wasn't even her issue. Them coming in wasn't because of Dom. And we're all friends. If we want to put this in the friend category, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we've all hung out outside of work. So anybody could went outside. Everybody should went outside at that point. I mean, you know. So did you feel Richardo was wrong for him asking, you know, asking Dom or asking her, you know, or saying he should have went out? I don't think Richardo should have spoken on it at all. Do you feel like Richardo was wrong? <laughs> It's, it's not it's not a trait of a man speaking on something that ain't got nothing to do with you. And we didn't even know Charlotte at the point. Charlotte was new. It's like you don't even know these people for real. Why you have anything to say? That was my take on that. June goes to certain people and he's, you know, kinda checking them on that. How did you feel about that? Yeah, I thought that was a little crazy too. No, nah, I think June should just stood on his square, like, you know, he he don't really have to engage in it unless it gets disrespectful. And then at the end of the day it's like if it's between two women, then it's between two women. That's how I see it. I'm not gonna try and try to defend my woman from another woman. And we're all friends. We've all hung out outside of work, so anybody can win outside. Everybody should win outside. All right, here's what we're gonna, some of the things, we can get some insight onto your thoughts on who's wrong or whose side you're on, okay? Safari or Patrick on, should they been allowed to come to the house for me? or if they should not come to the housewarming. So I think definitely Patrick should have known off the jump that that wasn't going to fly. Um, if I'm having a housewarming party at all, yeah, definitely have a housewarming. It's your spot. But if you want to invite them so bad, it's like, okay, now nah, what's that about? How did you feel first with her saying, she thought it was a trick? <laughs> I've known Patrick his whole life. Man, by far one of the cheapest people I've <laughs> So, you know, anybody, you know, any woman trying to put him in the category of being a trick, Nah, like, Broker had $10,000 on him. 
and it'll still go buy me chicken in real life. So nah, I I can't go for that one. I don't I don't even know how she caught the notion of that. I can't speak too much to that. For everybody that I'm fairly new to the company still too. It was mm-hmm. about a year and some change. Yeah. So, you know, we're still getting to know each other. So I haven't hung out with Patrick as much to for me to, you know, speak on that as far as what he's like. You're you're new to, you know, the company and Patrick, you guys don't hang out. You've known Patrick for 27 years, almost 28 years. Mm-hmm. When you're watching it back, people are saying, even myself, bro, like, I don't even know who this guy is sometimes. But um, do, how do you feel about that and what people say about that? I feel like love will make you, you mm-hmm. know, do some crazy things. Has it made you do anything similar? I can't say similar, <laughs> but I done been in some awkward situations because of, you know, me, you know, having that feeling of emotional love. Mm-hmm. Okay. He is the vagina version of Dick Matthias. <laughs> like, like, that is what Patrick is. Mama Joyce going to see Safari. And that threw me off looking at my gut like that. <laughs> that, one, that one really something I was trying to... He was not ready for that one. Yeah, it at threw all. me off. Mama Joyce allegedly called you and cursed you out. Are you and Mama Joyce in a better place today? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Okay. You know, it's... Uh, it just goes back to what me and you spoke on earlier about even, you know, situations where me and Todd bump heads. I mean, at the end of the day, we still family. Um, it's hard, you know, mixing family and business because, you know, the emotions are, are kind of there. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say that the situation didn't happen, but yeah, me and Mama Joyce are in a good place. Okay. She was just going off cursing and she said that I see my phone. Um, Bertha said she will never speak to you again because you did not speak to her. How are you and Aunt Bertha today? And I said it'll be a cold day in hell when I speak again. Man, Aunt Bertha is like this, man. That's my dog. She be bringing cookies and brownies. And I just had one of her little uh, German chocolate cake brownies. Uh-huh. Best bakery ever. And it ain't even a bakery. It's just this lady in her house. Just going crazy. Since the season premiere of The Real Housewives of Atlanta was tonight. Are you serious? How did she do it? Marlo has spent some good money on this party, I can tell. This event space is not cheap. I need you to pull up each picture and we're going to play a game. You ready? No. Ah, yeah, you are. So in the episode, we learned that um, Patrick and, you know, Safari, we're going through DMs, and I think we talk about it on the Speak On It with Patrick that we were going to do an online show called Hook Up, Date, or I'm Straight. You either have to choose, would you hook up with the person, Mm. would you date them, or yeah, I'm straight, I'm good on that. And I'm going to give the current cast of season 14 of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, and you have like three seconds to choose. So, first up, we got Kenya Moore, Hook Up, Date, or I'm Straight. Uh, I'm straight. I'm straight. Mmm, he is a beautiful woman. We have Sheree. I'm straight, straight. Drew, Sedora. I'm straight. I'm gonna hook up. We have Sonya Ross. I'm straight. Yeah, I'm straight. And last but not least, we have Marlo Hampton. I'm straight. I'm straight. See, you know, look, I'm, okay, I'm so who was the first one? Who was the first one? Kenya. I probably love Kenya. Man, listen, so unbeknownst. Yeah, you know like what I'm saying? her and another girl, but so everybody like, else. Was you know what I'm saying? Like, my housewife crush, not all housewives, no boy. So, your housewife crush is not on there. You said you would you would hook up with maybe Drew and Kenya. Okay. So, again, you saw the season premiere of season 14 of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. I think he wants it. I just be tired. I'll be tired. Just it later. Later. Hey, there you go. Just a bit. There you go. There you go. There you go. Of course, I had to keep it. Bro, I couldn't add in your family and your boss mm-hmm. scenario else that might be a little awkward yeah, and weird, yeah, yeah, yeah. to be honest. Mm-hmm. To be honest, okay, so I didn't want to go there. If you're watching this video, then you've already seen season uh, 14, episode 1 of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. And you've seen season 1, episode 9 of Candy and the Gang. I love all sexualities, you know. I love the GB, the L, T, Q, G, B, Q. Community. If one thing, if you had somebody who you said both would said would be different coming into the new season, who would that person be? I don't get one pick. You get one pick. Philip. Mm. Why do you think Philip would be different? Because Philip already has like that demeanor of yeah, man, I'm not. Yeah, what? Nah, that's not my job. I'm not doing that. So like, I can see as it goes further, 
I can it's see the like, crazier. Yeah, I can <laughs> I can see the I can see the arrogance boost. Cause my dog is arrogant as hell. Yeah. Okay. What about you? I still say drinker. Ah! Clenching my little pearls. Just because of like all the hell she catching from like her situations. Oh man. She coming back with a vengeance if we have a season two. Like I already know it. You saved the best for last. Same thing with me though. Oh, no, what it's about like, that? Because yeah. people have said you. Yes, yeah. sir. Who said me? I think Philip said me. And I don't. I'm, yeah, I don't Dom remember. said you. Dom said me too. Yeah. 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 I'm turning up all the way. What's that sure. mean? We gonna see. Tune in. Tune in. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna see. How have you felt, like you said, going places? Oh yeah, that's been surreal. Only because I thought stuff like that only happened to like like superstars. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was like. I don't feel like I don't feel like a celebrity. Mm -hmm. And it's just like. Oh, now you're a celebrity. And it's like, oh shit. I was in Florida. I went to this restaurant and we walked in and the lady at the register was like, like almost had a whole situation. Yeah, because people be trying to say you look like Morris Chestnut. I'm like, Morris Man, Chestnut, no, bro. Well, bruh. See, I wasn't even thinking about like, I'm just thinking, <laughs> thinking about, you know, it might have been that. I don't know. Oh, so because you said you've gotten that your whole life, right? Yeah, that's not a lie. People really? Are me. Yeah, Morris. I get that comparison mostly out of all of them. I get him, I get um, Leon, people gave me LeBron one time. So you've had great interactions with people thus far since being on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, there was one lady. Uh-oh. One lady came and, you know, I kind of played it off with her, but she came in the restaurant like, you know you can't be dating nobody, you work. She was serious though. I'm thinking, I'm waiting for the laugh, the giggle. <laughs> nah, to the point where I'm just having to like, I'm gonna go this way, I'm gonna just, thanks for coming out. <laughs> yeah, some people take that shit to heart, man. I ain't know it was that serious. Cause, I don't even watch TV, y'all. It's so crazy. Like, I don't even watch TV. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to now. You know, I catch our episodes and whatnot. But, yeah, I got to get into it so I know what's going on. Because people is crazy. Got people you. People crazy. What can they expect from Chef Melvin coming up? I'm actually about to launch a line of kitchen knives. Mm. I'm actually working on a line of uh, chef aprons and coats as well. So, you know what I'm saying? I'll definitely be having a memorabilia and merch soon. Okay, remember your merch for Velvet, and they can catch you. Of course, we're gonna put your Instagram handle right here in the little bit there, up under there, and on the screen, so they can make sure they follow you yes, and keep sir. following. And stay tuned in. And what about you? I am going to not reinvent the wheel, so I'm gonna go back into events. Hmm. When I was doing events and doing promo, my goal was always to get to four events a year, um, seasonal, and you know, rake in a boatload of money in each one of them, so that you know we can. Enjoy what kind them. of events? <clears throat> Are these like manager, I date my employee events, or is these oh like? Oh my god! I was just asking a question. Did y'all just hear that? Nah, nah. Um, so special events like parties, um, fashion shows. More coming up right now. Actually, we're doing a pool party. Okay. So Who's that's we? involving me. Melvin's gonna be cooking the food. Patrick is involved. I told him he can do uh, valet. Okay. It has a big parking lot. We rented out a whole rec center. It's called Splash Bash ATL. And when is it? June 18th. Both of you are currently still working at the restaurant. If they hey, have got, have got, but <laughs> what would you say if you're teasing the finale of Candy and the Gang coming up next week? What would you say that why should they tune in? Somebody taking a big step up. You know, he's stepping into the to the grown man. And, and what about? I mean, up even it's a, an event that happens. That I think it was a lot going on. Too. It was definitely a lot. It was a lot. I think I was working that day too, so I was kind of like in and I out, me, in and out. Me and you both work that day. Too. Yeah, yeah, work, um, and it's a lot goes on. Um, I did tease. We was that the night Dom was drunk. We can all three say that it might be some changes that happen in the company that night. Yeah, that was that night, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Dang. So, so you gotta tune in, cause yeah, you gotta, it's some yeah. stuff that happens. And you're going to be like, what? I was not expecting that to happen. And it's going to be some other stuff that happened that you were not expecting that to happen. I want to say thank you so much to both of my guests. We got Chef Melvin on the left. We got Mr. Brandon Black on the right. All three of us have spoke on it today for season one, episode nine of Candy and the Gang. So we want to thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all. Again, my name is Don Juan. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Continue to like, share, subscribe, share this video. Thank y'all so much for coming to us to speak on it. Speak on it. I ain't hear no high notes. Oh my God. You gotta hit the low then. You gotta hit the low. It's you cool. supposed to get your- You hit the low. See, you see I be trying y'all. This is what I be dealing with. But thank y'all so much. <laughs> Keep to it is. Well, speak on it. Well, I am your girl Candy and I have Riles, AKA Riley, Riley, AKA Riles. Yeah. And we are about to speak on it. Well, hello there. Hello.
Hello everyone, I am your girl Candy and I'm about to speak on it. Speak on it. <laughs> what do you think about the new season of The Real Housewives of Atlanta? Um, I think Sonya's really funny. I thought it was three golds and one bronze. No, 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 four golds and one bronze. I don't talk about a bronze. Well, what did you think about the first episode? Um, I think it was nice. What did you think about the drama with Drew and her husband? Um, I think divorce. Oh! <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> 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 I asked you though. <laughs>